Hello everybody, it's Star Raptor here, and I just got out of my first screening for Solo, A Star Wars Story. I'm going to be talking all spoilers. This is my reaction video. I'm going to just basically talk about it all. So, that being said, huge spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the movie, go watch it, then come back and watch this. So, my initial reaction was, this was everything I wanted it to be. I am very satisfied. I didn't think this was going to be like the best Star Wars film ever but I wanted a good portrayal of Han Solo, and that's what I got. Alden Ehrenreich brought his A-game. Same with Donald Glover. Everybody involved really did great with their roles. Even Dryden Voss, played by Paul Bettany, was this really cruel, cunning type of underworld boss. And that's what I really liked about this a lot, is just the whole underworld. Like, there was a little bit of the Empire sprinkled in there, and going into this, I didn't think there was gonna be a lot of the Imperials, and I was happy to see that this was such a far-flung story that we've ever seen in Star Wars. This is like something that you might see in a comic book or something you might see in a novel. We're not seeing literally a lightsaber light up. This is the first time in any Star Wars movie that we have not seen a lightsaber, so this is like the first step in that direction, and I think this is ultimately what Lucasfilm was trying to go for with the standalone film. So let's talk more about the specifics. The opening was awesome, way better than Rogue One in my opinion. They had that little three uh, sentence kind of, uh, not even an opening crawl. It was more, you know, just statements about they're on Corellia, they have these kids that are running around trying to survive. Hyperfuel is the number one thing. We are about, I think, 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. A little bit, I, uh, maybe I'll find out more in a visual guide when I pick it up tomorrow, which I can't wait for that. But yes, Corellia was awesome. One of my favorite locations in games like Star Wars The Old Republic. So I loved seeing it brought to life. I love seeing all these characters, especially this uh, matriarch type character that's like the centipede. Wow, they went out of the park with Neil Scanlon. He, 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 he just hit a home run with the all the characters. I feel like there was maybe one CG character and that was played by Jon Favreau. And that character was a lot of fun, Rio Durant. I, I really like that character and I really wish he didn't die so early in the film. And there was a lot of death even. Tandy Newton's character didn't stay around very long, but I really appreciated her role in, even though if it was short-lived. Uh, talking more about that relationship from the get-go, you get to see Han, he's on the go. He is pretty much racing a street rat and it's awesome. He has this relationship with Kira. They get split up for three years. I like how they had that time jump. I think that was great. Um, talking more about Alden Ehrenreich, again, this video is gonna be me talking all over the place. There's not gonna be much structure at all to this video, so you know, buckle up because it's gonna be a little bit crazy in this video. Usually I have things planned out, but I'm just you know, flying off the cuff with this one. But yeah, Alden Ehrenreich, he pulled off Han Solo more than I think he could. I'll be honest with you, like, his gestures, the things he said, this is written by uh, John Kazan and Larry Kazan, Larry Kazan being the person that brought Han Solo to life in Empire Strikes Back, Force Awakens, Return of the Jedi, so yes, he knows his stuff. I was very shocked by Solo not being his actual name. I thought that was, that was good though, because it's like he's a street urchin kid, he only has a first name. There's a lot of first name people in Star Wars. I mean, you look at Finn, you look at Rey. So he gets recruited and he's, the, the Imperial actually makes up the name for him, Han Solo. There was a report that came out years ago where Bob Iger, head of Disney, was saying something about, oh, this movie is how Han gets his name, and then he kind of drew that back real quick. Well, technically, it kind of is how he got his name. This is an origin story more than anything else, I'll be honest with you. Like, that's what this movie is about, and that even includes getting his actual name. So, yeah, that was pretty interesting. His um, relationship with Chewie was perfect. The chemistry between... Alden Ehrenreich and Hunus Guantanamo was awesome. That first meeting when it's Chewie and he's in this pit of mud and it was just so feral seeing Chewie like that. But then you actually see Han Solo speaking Shiri Rook, which is the language of the Wookiees. I don't think we've ever even heard any other character other than a Wookiee in any games or anything even trying to attempt to speak uh, the Wookiee language. So that was cool. Plus we've seen more Wookiees. It was just like, don't even get me started, well I want to get started actually, on talking about the references in this movie were out of this world. I mean I am talking about, we have references to Rogue One, we have references to the Clone Wars, we have references to like 
I guess, Star Wars Rebels, we have references to so many locations that they were name dropping. They name dropped that Beckett was the one to kill Ara freaking Singh. Like, that was so cool. Like, there was all these little tidbits. John Kasdan, the writer, said he was going to put so much stuff from Legend in, in this, and he really did. Like I said, I cannot wait to pick up this visual guide and just dig in deeper. We've seen those decraniated people from uh, Rogue One that Dr. Avazon was doing the little surgeries on half heads. We see one of my favorite characters in Star Wars and it's Bethic Two Tubes, I think. Or it could be Edrio Two Tubes. It's one of them. I, I'm a fan and I should know which one is which, but it doesn't matter because Two Tubes is in this. I mean, we even have Warwick Davis's character in this and he was actually in um, Phantom Menace and now he's like whatever like 20 years older or something like that I guess we're gonna go there guys I guess we're gonna go right there right away there's a lot of great stuff in this movie but I did not expect to see Darth Maul holy crap I thought it was the Emperor for a second and then it's just nope that is all Darth Maul and the best part is it was actually played by Ray Park Oh man, talk about bringing it back. I, and this makes so much sense because this being all about the crime syndicates, if you guys watch Clone Wars at the end of season five, you know, Darth Maul is amassing this crime syndicate with the Pikes. By the way, the Pikes were in this. Really freaking cool there too. But it makes total sense. I mean, we do know what happens with Darth Maul in Rebels. Um, so this is gonna be set between uh, that. And he lights up his freaking lightsaber. Oh wait, I just said it. There was a lightsaber in Solo Star Wars Story. So I take back my previous declaration of this being a Star Wars without a lightsaber. Because they did get one in there. And I feel like that's going to be a cameo in every Star Wars film. They're going to work a lightsaber in there before. But I think that already counted because I think in the background in um, Dryden Voss's office, there were like lightsaber ancient Sith hilts, I think. Maybe a Sith holocron as well. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Darth Maul freaking badass cure is going with and to meet him so we know there's going to be a sequel if they seriously don't make a sequel to solo star Wars story i will be super pissed because they have me sitting at the edge of my seat to actually see darth maul come to life once again oh man i can just talk for an hour about darth maul but i don't want to take the rest of the spotlight from the rest of the story and i want to kind of backtrack a little bit so we have han he gets captured or not captured but he gets himself recruited into the military and holy crap, it gets so freaking aggressive out of nowhere, vicious. They go to Minban. It, it wasn't mentioned, but I'm pretty sure that was Minban. And it's all out war. It's 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 freaking nuts. I mean, this is like Rogue One type esque stuff, like just bombs going off everywhere. Like that was intense, and that's where we first meet Beckett. And I want to talk about Beckett because Beckett is an awesome character, super complex. Like this guy has no allegiance to anybody. And by the end of the movie, you see how, because he's, well, he's like double-crossing everybody in this one. And, well, we see Han shoot first. Literally, he shot first. So, bam, that's what Han does. And this story builds up Han, his whole mentality about Kira now, about how he can't trust anybody in his life, because this is what happens when you trust somebody. And even Becky gives him the hint. Um, we've seen Viper droids with like beefed up like cannons on them. And this NIST was a big surprise. Like there were a lot of things that were predictable in this movie, a lot of things that were predictable. But I wasn't expecting Emphis Nest to actually be an ally by the end of this movie. And it's just, you know, there were a lot of things where I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, but yeah, it was definitely see cool seeing that first scene. There's so much action in this movie, it felt so much like. 1977 Star Wars A New Hope like there was just you know wall-to-wall -wall action from the start to the end um, I have the reaction coming out of this movie is just pretty much like exhilaration um, about how they pulled this off so well I mean not really once at all did I think about oh this was because of the director change like I think there was such a smooth transition I gotta say wow to Ron Howard because uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, you know, they got kicked off the job, they got fired, things were working out, and Ron Howard supposedly like redid 80% of this movie, I think. And whoa, to be able to pull that off and still make the release date, it's pretty incredible. I want to talk a little bit about the music as well. John Powell 
man, this guy is awesome. I might have liked this more than the Rogue One soundtrack and probably should because they only had like two months to work on that, so I can't really say much about that, even though I did enjoy a couple songs. But John Powell, man, I can't wait to see this movie again because I'm going to just be listening for the soundtrack and watching for a lot of other things. But they had parts of the asteroid chase mixed with um, the, the TIE fighter thing from A New Hope seamlessly. Like, there's little cues from the Imperials in there. Oh, man, they had new themes. I have to listen to the soundtrack now. Hopefully it's on Spotify. I can listen to it because I want to know exactly what John Williams wrote. He wrote the Han Solo type of uh, theme. So I got to check that out. But, yeah, who else? Who else? Um, It's just very fun. So many planets. Of of course, Donald Glover was incredible. The first thing you hear him say from, like, in a background scene, he's like, oh, my God, that guy sounds just like Billy D. Williams in this point. Like, it's insane. Uh, I love seeing how they actually organically destroyed the Falcon all in one movie. Like, you see it all bright, pristine, shiny. It's like this racing vehicle. And that little note on the front was actually an escape pod. And, oh, man, he just destroys it. Han Solo just destroys the Falcon. And he wins it back from him at the end. That was, like, the perfect ending. I mean, yeah, it would have been nice to see Jabba the Hutt. But I'm sure that they're going to have him in the next movie. That's going to be everything with with um, Jabba the Hutt. I'm sure we'll see probably Boba Fett in the next movie. I think that'll be a whole separate storyline. I am kind of happy in the end that they didn't just shoehorn them in. Um, You know, Maul's going to be a huge factor in the next movie. I hope they get this thing fast-tracked because, man, this was such a fun movie. I I really can't wait to see it again. We got the little uh, most wanted young adult novel coming out tomorrow, which is going to build us the backstory of what Han was doing on Corellia. Um, supposedly he did know his dad, uh, which is weird because why wouldn't he have a last name? So that was something that was kind of going around in my head. Like he says he was on his own, but later then he did say that he was with his dad or something. And I, I want to see that relationship more with Kira before they got separated, how that was going. Uh, so many planets. Uh, we get to see Kessel for the first time in Star Wars cinema, which was really cool. You get to see other Wookiees. Now that was interesting because I guess that was a female Wookiee. Um, in the trailers, we all thought that was Nala or whoever that love interest of Chewie is in Legends. Apparently that wasn't so because they didn't really address that ever again. I wish they kind of would have addressed more of like who that Wookiee was or whatever. Probably just a random Wookiee. Uh, but that was cool. Uh, L3, 3T, um, interesting character. I still think, even from reading Last Shot, that she was a little bit too animated for a droid. Um, the whole droid right thing was interesting. I know they've been doing a lot of that kind of stuff in the canon right now. Uh, as far as L3, though, yeah, she was... And that was my prediction. I didn't actually announce this anywhere, so I can't really... It's my prediction, but how she is part of the Falcon. So L3 is actually now part of the Falcon... So every time you see the Millennium Falcon and, and Han Solo saying baby and stuff, he's really kind of talking to L3. So this kind of changes the whole trilogy now. Like I can't wait to see the original trilogy again to just have those thoughts in my head about when Han meets Lando and, and Empire Strikes Back at Cloud City, about how he's telling the last time he's seen him. Now, if they do a sequel, maybe Lando will be back. It'd be stupid for them not to put Lando in it because he was excellent. Um, yeah, but, oh, man... I can go on and on and on, but I want to kind of keep my thoughts sort of concise. And I want to hear what you guys have to say about Solo Star Wars Story. Did you enjoy it? What were your initial reactions? What were some of your favorite things about the movie? What were some things that you maybe didn't like? Let's all hear it in the discussion below. Just spoil the heck out of this thing. I'm going to have a spoiler, so feel free to talk about whatever. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. I release Star Wars content on a weekly basis. I talk about the comics, the TV series, the novels, all of that. And I'm going to be talking about Solo for the foreseeable future. So come back to the channel. Check out what I have to upload. My name is Star Raptor. Thank you so much for watching. And may the Force be with you always. Thanks for checking out the video. Please hit that thumbs up symbol. It helps me know that I'm making content that you guys enjoy. And if you enjoyed this video, I also include two videos down below you guys should check out. And please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps support me and it notifies you guys of when I get new videos up on the channel. You can also contact me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Star Raptor.